Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Taibo, and today we are surrounded by Olivetti M240s. This is gonna be episode five of the three rusty M240. Previously, you saw that we opened them up and I looked at how rusty they actually were. I put them into the glass blaster, I primed them. And the last episode, I asked all of you if you could give me some feedback of your thoughts about what color should I paint them in. And I had a good bunch of people writing to me and besides one, everybody said, keep them in the original color. The one that had an other suggestion he decided that it could be cool, was his own words, to have it in the Italian flag, as these are from Italy. But the minority has spoken, so as you may see, they are all grey. Besides, and let me do this, I painted the bottom black. More on that a little bit later. So in this episode, I will open them up and we will have a look inside because I also mounted the motherboards and the expansion motherboard and put in the cards that I had when I got the computers. I will try to explain some of the features of the motherboards so that it's maybe more clear to you why this specific brand the M240 is actually quite amazing computer. But let me adjust the camera first and let's open them up. So here they are on my table. One with the way that it's actually supposed to be. So usually you have the cover up here and the other one I turned around so you can see the motherboard. Let me start by looking into this one. As regarding the color, as you can see, it's gray. But as I told you, I decided on doing this one in black uh, just because I can, more or less. Um, I thought gray and gray would like, that was a bit boring. And um, let me do black. I actually decided on black also because the American version of the Olivetti M240, which is an AT&T, they actually are in black. So I said, let's do a tribute to the AT&T also making it black. I then also decided on having the hard disk bay. Let me see if I can get it out. This one, this is where you mount the hard disk inside, put it here, three and a quarter. So that one is now also black. Very quickly, you can see this is the power supply, but there's no power supply inside it. The reason is that I still need to look at all the power supplies, measure them and probably take out all the capacitors and other stuff because they were also rusty and I don't trust that. Let me start by talking about this board. So this is the board for the expansion card. And as you can see, it's 8-bit. If I move this one over, and this one is actually the Olivetti M24 SP, and I'm taking this one because the SP and the 240 is the same CPU, memory, speed, and stuff. So they are the same, just newer version. But as you can see, in the Olivetti M24 SP, and also on the M24, M24, the expansion card board down here includes the 16-bit. And over here, it isn't there. So I guess Olivetti said, let's make it a little bit cheaper, so let's remove that board. But before I continue, I'll just explain that you can actually buy an add-on expansion card and put it down here. The expansion card is more or less just this area cut out and moved over here. 
and the connection to that one comes from the motherboard up here. So this is the 16-bit expansion. This up here is the 8. So let me come back to the motherboard later on. So it comes with 8 bits, but you can buy an additional 16 expansion here. Let's move to the actual motherboard and let me mount my camera and I'll walk you through all of it. So I thought we should just start looking at the M240 motherboard, compare it a little bit to the M24 SP. As you can see, the SP is a full-size motherboard, which is the old design. And moving over to 240, the motherboard shrink a bit. The components are a little bit closer and some of the units, the logic units, are now combined into fewer chips. And we have this board down here, which I will come back to later on. So this is the M24SP. This is the M240. It has the same CPU. It has the same size of memory and it's the same speed and clock frequency and weight state. So they're the same and the connections are the same. So there's the floppy disk. Over here is for the 8 bit. This is the 16 bit that I talked about. The 16 bit is here. And we have the parallel serial and keyboard. So that's the differences between the two motherboards. Let's have a closer look at the M240 and let me go through um, some of the chips and the design of the motherboard. So let's have a look at the motherboard and let's start with this part of the motherboard. This is connected via this tiny ribbon cable. And before everybody is writing comments or screaming at the screen, I know this is a Vata battery and I know they leak like crazy. But this is a new one on all three of them. I, as one of the first thing, I removed the Vata batteries. So this is a new one. I sorted it in because I will soon start actually, once I have walked through the power supply, I will try to see if there's actually stuff going on that is working the motherboards. So I need the battery for that purpose. But back to this area, remind you that this is the front. It's upside down, but this is the front. So this board, provides the power LED, a reset button, a volume for the speaker, and another LED which is supposed to be, uh, which is connected to this connector that then will go to the hard disk controller. So this is for the activity on a hard disk. And the battery will then provide all the power once you have turned off the computer to the actual timer. The timer sits up here. So that's why it's connected over here also. Let's move into the actual motherboard. Let's start by this area. This area is the memory area. This specific computer here, which is what they all came with, to my knowledge at least, they came with 640 kilobyte of RAM. These chips in here, they are the 41256 and it's the AP-12 version. The dash 12 means that these are 120 nanoseconds. They also zero weight states, which is one of the features I was talking about that makes this computer, the 240 and the 200, sorry, and the M24 SP fast because there's zero weight state and it's 120 uh, nanoseconds RAM. If we move down here, here we have the BIOS. This one is the high and this is the low BIOS. The current version in this, in all three of the computers are the version 204. 
This one I previously talked about, this is combined with this one, which is for the expansion unit for all the expansion card. This is the 16-bit extension, and this is the 8-bit for the expansion card, driven from here. If we move in to the middle of the card, we here have the CPU. This is an Intel 8086. This is a Dash 1, and this one runs at 10 megahertz. You could, in this socket, put in the coprocessor. Let's move over here. So this one is the serial, uh, um, serial port. This is the parallel port. The serial port has the serial controller down here and the parallel has the parallel controller up here. This is the DMA controller that we have sitting there. And this is the interrupt controller. Moving further up, here we have the keyboard connector and the keyboard connector is obviously connected to the keyboard controller, which is here. And previously mentioned, this is the timer that actually gets uh, the, vo the six voltage from, sorry, the 3.2 voltage from the battery down here. Over here, we have the floppy disk um, ribbon cable. And that's because that here, we are having the floppy disk controller. So all in all, it's very simple. There are not that many components as there were in the previous version of the Olivetti series. Um, we also up here have two rows of switches. This row is the switch A and this is the switch B. And on the switch A, the three first one, if the position of all three of them are in the off mode, that means that this is actually 640 and they are in the off mode. I will put a description to the settings of all of these on uh, in the comments later uh, down so you can see how you configure the Axiom motherboard. I think I made a mistake. I said that the three first ones I just recalled I'm getting old, so that's my excuse. It's not the three ones that decides, it's the two first one that decides the memory size on the sport. Some of the settings also decides whether or not you will have an extra comp port that is here. And some of the settings will tell you for the floppy drive, is it a five and a quarter, three and a half? Is it 360, is it 1.2, is it, um, 720 or 144, um, the capacity of the floppy drives. All that is set here because there's actually no software BIOS on the M240 or the previous version of the computer. So it's all set via this one. The last thing I just want to mention is all the um, crystals. There's one here, we have one here, we have one here, and then we have one here. This specific one is the 30 uh, megahertz version and that divided by three is the one that actually runs the CPU over here. So that's my brief introduction to the motherboard and um, let's wrap it up. So that pretty much wraps up this fifth episode of the Olivetti 240. The next task for me is looking at this. These are the three uh, power supplies and um, I think they are more or less okay-ish, but I'll have to measure it and see if they're actually working. I just want to tell you that it's the same power supply type as we have been seeing on all of the other Olivetti computers that you, I have on the channel until now. So it's the, let me see, it's the high voltage area and it's the low voltage area uh, connected via this cable. So I will have to go through them, look at all the components and see if I dare turn them on. And after turning them on, I need to measure whether or not the voltage are the correct ones and they are stable. So I hope for the next episode, which is going to be number six. It's a lot.
there will be I'll have a status on which one will be working and which one will not be working and obviously if they are not working I will have to take a decision whether or not I need to buy a brand new one instead of because you can't get these anymore they are specifically made for Olivetti's so I don't see them at all anywhere on sale so we'll see how it goes but thank you for watching this short episode 5 and I hope you enjoyed it and you know please give me a thumbs up if it was okay or that one and most of all please do subscribe and help my channel and get informed whenever I make new content for all of you. Thank you so much. See you soon.